Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Patrick Breyer. Dr. Breyer is a member of the European Parliament with the European Pirates, who are part of the Greens and European Free Alliance Group. As a member of the Committee for Civil Lib Liberties and Home Affairs and of the Legal Committee, his political work concentrates on safeguarding fundamental rights in the digital age, especially with regards to privacy, citizen participation and democracy. Patrick is a long-term activist in the civil liberties movement for consumer and citizen rights and is notably a member of the German NGO Working Group on Data Retention as well as the author of the blog datenspeicherung.de, Minimum Data, Maximum Privacy. Okay, Patrick, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and one soapbox moment. So let me put the first question on screen and read it out. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecom operators. Yes, hi, and uh, thanks for having me. Well, you see, uh, users are not uh, paying to access the network of their telcos, but to access the internet. Hmm. And it is also a right under the uh, EU's open internet regulation that users can access whatever content they, they wish without uh, arbitrary intervention by their internet provider. And they are paying for the right to have this access. So the variable costs of data volume for telcos is negligible. So um, what really costs the money is building the network, uh, uh, maintaining the network, uh, managing subscribers, etc. But the amount of data that these subscribers sent over the network is a fraction of a fraction of, of a euro, um, if you look at the cost of it. And you can tell by um, looking at the increase in, in flat rate subscriptions all around the world. Uh, and you can also see that, by the way, telcos offering these services are often increasing their profits. So they're not exactly uh, poor. Okay, so basically, um, when we're talking about accessing more contact, content, we're talking about variable costs. And you're saying the the big portion of the burden is the fixed cost of putting the fiber, the the the, the cables uh, to, to the homes. But afterwards, whatever more bits, bytes that are uh, used do not make such a big difference. And as you said, users are paying for it through their subscription. And when they use more, they increase uh, the price of their subscription. That's um, right. Yeah. So. We know that there's a conversation that was kickstarted before summer break uh, coming from telcos in terms of uh, what they call fair contribution. What do you think are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telecom operators? Well, you know, this is an old concept that we know uh, looking back at the telephony era, uh, you know, it was basically calling party pays. And um, this was one of the reasons uh, why some phone calls used to cost uh, euros a minute, uh, cross-border phone calls in the past. And so these uh, termination monopolies of, of telcos that were used to collect money from anyone reaching out to their customers were really bad for everyone, except for the telcos, of course. And in fact, in 2012, uh, this concept was discussed and discarded at the International Telecoms Union. So they called it sending party pays uh, uh, principle there. There was a huge uh, backlash at the time. And also the EU's regulator, Beric, has investigated the issue several times and has repeatedly come to the conclusion that uh, introducing this for the internet is uh, dangerous and unworkable. So if the commission still moves ahead with this uh, proposal, it can only be explained by a capture by European uh, telecom interests. Sh surely that cannot happen in Brussels, a capture by interests. <laughs> um, but but yes, I, I, I see your point that this is not a new discussion. It's just being marketed as new with, with the fairness on top instead of the sending party pays uh, label, but the principle is the same. 
and I'm old enough to remember um, having grown abroad uh, that, uh, you know, when we called back home, that was once a month and we were all fearful of the invoice we would receive back then. So thank God the internet solved that uh, connectivity issue. Um, let me go to the third question um, because it, it's more anecdotal, but it's also one that has been put forward. Do you think it's appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and of telecom operators in infrastructure as suggested by some? Well, look, um, the former commissioner, uh, Nelly Kurz herself acknowledged a few years ago that this is not an adversarial relationship because content providers create the demand for um, buying the telcos products. So the telecoms industry uh, benefits from the increased internet usage because they can sell uh, more and more and more expensive, uh, extensive plans to their customers due to the increased um, use. And um, in fact, the EU regulator Barrick investigated what are the reasons for why some countries have better uh, digital infrastructure than others. And they found that the decisive factor is not uh, the money, uh, but uh, what's much more important is um, how permits are handled for uh, uh, building uh, infrastructure or, for example, that in many countries, telcos recently invested in, in vectoring instead of uh, uh, fiber optic technology. So it, it's really a different factors that um, are the reason for uh, why infrastructure is not uh, in, in a good state in, in some countries as compared to others. Money won't change that. And the way that big tech needs to um, contribute to um, our, our needs and our society is called taxes. Yes. So on the one hand, there's maybe um, poor choices in, in infrastructure building or still what um, was called in the past, sweating the assets, as they said. So there's something already there and you don't feel like replacing it until it's really obsolete. Um, on the other hand, red tape in certain countries, which, ma which makes it difficult to get rights of way and, and other things solved. And uh, thirdly, as you pointed out, uh, it would be nice if uh, we wouldn't be talking about an internet tax for big tech, but if you were talking about taxes for big tech um, as a whole. Um, uh, which which um, I, I can only say would be helpful so that we can stop talking about sector-specific taxes. Um, that brings us to the moment where you have full freedom uh, of speech. Um, you always have full freedom of speech, obviously, uh, which is the soapbox moment. Um, I've put on screen uh, Roberta Metzola, the president of the European Parliament, Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, Two strong women uh, that can decide a lot or at least can influence a lot. Uh, please take one to two minutes and go for it. Well, look, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, I'll, I'll address you. The plans of your commissioners to eliminate net neutrality really need to be stopped because adopting a model that allows for or even mandates uh, access fees. That would be a disastrous return to the old economic model that we used to have for tele telephony, where telecoms companies and uh, countries uh, used and abused their termination access monopolies to make communications expensive. And therefore, we call on you to develop and pursue a better strategy for promoting connectivity in Europe than uh, uh, introducing these access fees. Thank you. I think that was extremely clear. Uh, basically, yes, there might be problems. No, that is not the solution. <laughs> but um, decisive action should be undertaken by the European Commission to address the real problems. Um, let's hope that, uh, you know, maybe not uh, Frau von der Leyen herself, but someone from her cabinet hears you. Uh, and um, I'm sure that we will continue this discussion in the next months uh, with rumors of consultations and of fact-finding missions. So um, to be pursued, I would say, in the future. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to participate. 
Thank you for having me.